lecture, we're going to take a look at the, con the concept of nutrition in relation to overnutrition and undernutrition. And nutrition is the science of optimal cellular met metabolism and its impact on health and disease. With nutrition, this also breaks further down into macronutrients, micronutrients, and phytochemicals. Macronutrients are what gives us our energy. These are our sources of energy such as protein, fats, and carbohydrates. Micronutrients are vitamins and minerals. These particular elements are needed in minute amounts in order to keep our bodies in check and keep us moving in the direction of, of, of health. Phytochemicals are plant compounds. They have microorganism, I'm sorry, they have an antimicrobial effect, antioxidant effect, and anti-inflammatory, and as well as they are immune boosting. You'll find phytochemicals like such as the lutein in green vegetables and lycopene in, in tomatoes and tomato products. The scope and categories of nutrition and problems. I like this chart because it does explain, it kind of takes a look at both spectrums of optimal nutrition and then those individuals in insufficient nutrition and excess nu nutrition. And you can, can have malnourishment from undernutrition or overnutrition. So when we look at malnourishment from undernutrition, this is inadequate intake, impaired nutrient absorption, or ineffective nutrient utilization, and this is when individuals have a BMI of less than 18.5. When we look at overnutrition or malnutrition, this is excess calorie intake leading to weight gain. And when we look at BMIs in relation to this, BMI of 25 to 29.9 is considered mildly obese. We get into class 1 obesity, we're looking at a BMI of 30 to 34.9, class 2, 35 to 39.9, and class 3, greater than 40. When we look at insufficient nutrition, this is where we have insufficient or excess quantity of quality of macronutrients and micronutrients. Okay. Optimal nutrition means that all nutrients are available in balanced amounts for cellular metabolism and physio physiological functioning. Okay. Just something to remember and keep in the back of your head because a lot of us struggle with getting, um, keeping ourselves nutritionally sound is poor nutritional health negatively impacts health and poor health can negatively impact poor nutrition. Okay, So poor nutrition can lead to poor health, but also if we have poor health, then maybe we're not eating the nutrients or able to get the nutrients we need, so this can impart or lead to poor nutrition as well. Review of the anatomy and physiology, this is again for you. Um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time going back through anatomy and physiology. Um, so refer to table 16-1 also because this gives you required nutrients. So these are some charts that I want you to take a look at. But when you look at a review of anatomy and physiology, keep in mind if we have a person that is having problems with oral intake, such as they have cavities or loss of, a loss of teeth, could that affect their nutrition? Okay. If we have somebody that has a digestive issue, could that affect it? Problems with absorption or ability to eliminate um, nutrients, that can cause problems. Okay. There's all kinds of issues when we look or disease processes that you're going to learn about as we go through, as you go through the anatomy and physiology that people could be having problems with. Okay. Consequences of malnutrition. Each macronutrient and macronutrient and micronutrient has a specific function. Okay. And looking at your book and going through, that, this is all kind of listed out for you. Decreased protein impairs growth, um, stunting the height and brain development, and affects the body's ability to repair itself. So um, you will see a lot of times when individuals are in the hospital, we want to make sure they're getting enough protein, especially if they have wound healing. They may need an in increased amount of protein to, to help to improve um, the wound itself. Carbohydrates. This alters cellular metabolism and results in the use of dietary protein, which decreases all repair and growth. So if we're not getting enough carbohydrates, then the, our body is going to go on and start taking proteins. Um, fatty acids, we have essential fatty acids, which affects cellular membranes, supports retinal development, neurotransmitters, production, and brain functioning. Vitamin C, remember learning about scurvy? Um, I remember learning about scurvy when I was in, in, in uh, I think, elementary school, and they talk about the limeys, the pirates, because they would suck on limes to prevent, to prevent scurvy. It has to do with um, loss of the 4Ds, okay? 
uh, pellagria, dermatitis, sun exposed area, diarrhea, and dementia and death. Those were the, the signs of scurvy. It's a vitamin, vitamin B deficiency. Um, thiamine, riboflavin, and niacin. Lutein um, is another one of the, the things that, that individuals can get from yellow and orange foods, and it helps to prevent macular degeneration. We'll see individuals that run a risk for macular degeneration that will go and, and, and get lutein vitamins. Excess, obese micronutrients in, or, in, or insufficient macronutrients, excess. This can lead to type 2 diabetes, coronary artery disease, hypertension, stroke, fatty liver disease, etc. There's, there is a chart on the next page um, in 16-2 that goes through the consequences of deficiencies and the consequences of toxicities. Um, this is something to go through and review, probably a review from your nutrition class. Okay. Types of malnutrition that you will see. Protein deficiency or excess, uh, meaning that they have too little protein or too much protein. Carbohydrate deficiency or excess, too, too much, you know, in the, in the realm of, uh, which is going to cause their blood sugars to elevate, uh, too much bread, too, many, too much pasta, or too little of that as well. Essential fatty acid deficiency or excess is also something that you may see. Vitamin deficiencies or excess and mineral deficiency or excess. Um, in your book, it talks about a couple other types of uh, specific types of malnutrition such as starvation-related malnutrition or anorexia, um, or acute disease-related malnutrition. This occurs with burns, injury, or trauma, or chronic disease malnutrition, such as with sarcopenic obesity or pancreatic cancer. Um, we lose a lot of muscle tissue when we have the chronic disease malnutrition. Notice risk factors that place individuals at risk for nutrition problems. This is very, very important uh, for you to take a look at closely as you're reading through your book. All individuals are potentially at risk. You're going to see um, that you're, there's certain specific populations that are at risk for type, different types of disorders. Okay. Europeans are more at risk for type 1 diabetes, celiac disease, Huntington's, and MS. Um, other things to consider when we're looking at populations at risk is we need to look at access to food, insufficient funds, high prices of, of, of quality food. In my experience, it's more expensive to try to eat healthy than it is to eat unhealthy. Uh, fast food is generally cheaper and a lot of times, sometimes you're going to run into the populations that have limited transportation, which is going to limit the types of food that they're going to have. Um, taking a close look at our populations that are at greater risk for problems with nutrition, we need to take a close look at the very young children and the very old. Okay, very young children have immature organ development and total dependence when they're babies on, one, on an individual to feed them, and especially those with premature births. Elderly adults, we as they get older, have reduced organ function and limited income a lot of times. A lot of times when individuals retire, if they haven't set up to have um, retirement over the years, they are, they are living off of what um, Social Security benefits. And so they're not going to be able to go out and buy the expensive kind of lettuce that, that is better for them. Okay, um, So they may also have interactions between medications and the nutrients that they're taking, you're going to see a lot of individuals, let me give you an example, somebody that's on Coumadin that has, um, cannot have green leafy vegetables because it has vitamin K in it. Okay? Um, they might also have, you'll hear a lot of medication interactions between grapefruit, cranberry juice, different things like that. Okay? Um, also, as they get older, sometimes they may have sensory deficits that allow them or don't allow them to be able to see food and be able to prepare food safely. A couple things to consider and keep in mind, this goes along with your developmental stages, is the first year of a child, their birth weight triples, their length increases by an average of 50%, okay? And infants, breast milk or formula and water is what we're supposed to give them for the first six months. Baby food, ideally at six months. And then that, remember with children, this goes along with every type of exemplar that we talk about, we're gonna talk about the, 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 those individuals across the lifespan. But 
they may they have a very small airway when they're young so this goes along with uh keeping food safe food in mind as far as cutting food up so that it's in a small portion so that they don't choke okay and you're going to find with each population that we work with there is going to be specific dietary regulations for that particular population another population to think about is pregnancy with when someone's pregnant they have increased carbohydrates and proteins and fats um, most macronutri macronutrients they will also increase and the expected weight gain for somebody that's pregnant is going to be 15 to 40 pounds. Older individuals, I already talked about some of the changes and things with them. They will also have an inability or, or redu reduced ability to ingest and absorb and metabolize some nutrients. They may also have a difficult time chewing depending on if they're using dentures. Maybe they have poor fitting dentures or they have cavities. Um, they can also have an elongated esophagus or atro atrophic changes to their esophagus that will interfere with digestion. Um, they may also have um, microflora uh, in their intestine, which is going to reduce the inability to absorb. You're going to see a lot more and more patients that are being put on um, things like Fluorostar, uh, which are, um, I can't think of the word right now, but to in improve the absorption within their stomach. And they may also have metabolic and uh, metabolic efficiencies. They may have reduced uh, metabolism or increased metabolism depending on disease processes that they're dealing with. How do we recognize other individuals that have um, problems with nutrition? Okay. Uh, when we look at laboratory values, albumin, blood glucose, hemoglobin A1C, lipids, electrolytes, etc. These are going to tell us a lot about our patients. Albumin takes a look at protein and how much protein our patients are consuming. Blood glucose is looking at the amount of carbohydrates. And if, if, we're, if we're within normal of our blood glucose, then we're probably doing okay. But this is, off, this is going to be an indicator of diabetes, meaning that the person is not able to, one, doesn't have enough insulin to, to bring the insulin or the, the glucose into the cells, or they have type 2 where um, they're insulin resistant. Hemoglobin A1C is another test that they check for to see how, how diabetes is being maintained. Lipid profile takes a look at our LDLs, which is our bad cholesterol, HDLs, which is our good cholesterol, triglycerides, which is typically high in somebody with diabetes, and then our overall cholesterol, looking at risk factors, not only for you know, whether we're eating properly, but can also show evidence of whether somebody has coronary artery disease. Electrolytes, this takes a look at potassium, um, magnesium, calcium, all those micro, uh, micronutrients that we do need, but we need in small elements, okay? And as, as we're looking at those, it's, it's going to show us or help us to identify nutritional problems. BUN, blood, urea, and nitrogen, is, is, helps with dehydration as a dehydrator, dehydration indicator. Other tests that they might use to rule out anemia or problems with calcium and phosphorus and, and to take a look at vitamin D levels. Um, other laboratory tests that you'll see used in children when they're born is a PKU test, which is a phenylketonuria. Um, they, this is where they do a heel poke um, to, uh, to assess for enzymatic deficiencies, okay, that can lead to mental retardation. They'll also do things like um, for cystic fibrosis where they do salt tests um, in order to assess and check for, that, for those particular um, nutritional problems. DEXA scans, where they're looking at bone density. We discussed osteoporosis in a previous video. Um, and then we need to learn to provide appropriate nursing and collaborative interventions to optimize nutrition. And I'm going to go into that in part two of this video. Thanks, and have a good day.